of animal snakes good pets let's talk about it as you can see here i've got a nice new bin to put some venomous snakes in and the first snake we're going to take out is a cape cobra venomous snakes many people get them because they're trying to level up or become more experienced and it's really really important not to have any ego because this whole thing with handling venomous snakes yes it can be dangerous so it's important for you not to have any ego whatsoever when working with these animals. This is a beautiful Cape Cobra. He's deep in the blue at the moment. So I gotta be very careful because they tend to act completely differently when they're in the blue because their eyes are opaque, they feel more threatened, everything like that. So I gotta be very, very gentle with the snake. And that comes to my second point. While we're busy cleaning these enclosures over here, you got to, you got to, Observe. Observation is one of the key factors in working with venomous snakes because look, if I put this water bowl down here, I take this snake out, I've got to observe. Okay, nice and slowly. I've got to observe. Oh wow, the snake's in the blue. There, that means I'm going to react totally differently when handling this animal because yes, he feels more threatened, so I gotta make him feel a lot safer. And as you can see, I'm not tapping him, I'm not acting crazy, because that in turn makes it way, way more difficult to handle the animal, because yes, it looks cool, they might hood up, but it is far more dangerous for you and it stresses them out. So keeping venomous snakes does not make you a good keeper. This is one of the many misconceptions that comes with working with these animals. People want to so-called level up because they believe that they've maxed their experience and their abilities with the animals they have and are currently working with. Keeping venomous animals does not make you a good keeper. In many cases, I've seen quite the opposite, on the contrary. Horrible noise! Keeping these animals makes it far, far more difficult just to do the daily maintenance because you're thinking about yourself, your family, and the animal. You've got to be very careful and be in the right mindset always 24 7 when working with these guys as you know i was not doing well i was really struggling health wise for the last two months so i've not touched snakes in months this is some of the first interactions i've had because you got to know your body know yourself when you're working with these animals so another important factor is handling responsibly and what i mean by that is not not just taking the animal for granted but being very gentle with this incredible species over here. Many things that people tend to do is tap the tail of the snake so it can quickly go inside. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to scare this animal because we're wanting to build trust with it. So it's nicely going in there nice and slowly. And that's what we want because this animal knows, okay, Bryce is not going to scare it. So I am building trust with the animal, not saying I'm taming it, more conditioning it. So it's not afraid of me and that can be dangerous and good in different ways it complacency is where it can become dangerous but you want to not scare these animals and build trust because that makes it safer for you it's not going to try and bite you 24 7 because it's afraid you don't want to always try and make the snake hood up flare up and go all spastic you want to build trust with the animal here's a perfect example with this little snouted cobra you can see i'm moving very slowly grabbing its coil of its body there very slowly i'm not moving all quickly because that scares the snake and we don't want to scare the snake because it makes it more dangerous for us and for them hey girl you see i'm not making huge movements when she even strikes at me and goes all crazy and there's other things like look at this well obviously there i had to move quite quickly because i don't want to take a bite but I'm not moving in weird jerking motions as you can see over here. She's she's a nice snake. So there is a point of getting to know your individual animals. Like yes, I know she's a bit of a crazy snake over there and I'm going to handle her accordingly. That comes with experience because observation is one of the key points in working with these creatures. 
you got to observe and you got to constantly be aware of what's going on and make sure you're handling the animals accordingly. Let me clean her enclosure and we'll be right back. Another thing is impulse buying. Buying an animal just because you've seen it and you want it. I've seen far, far too many people walk away at an expo with something like a white lip pit viper because they want it. They've had no experience. They kind of got the mindset of get it now, learn later when you don't even have a setup or experience to work with that kind of animal. Over here we have the female Cape Cobra who is a very feisty individual. She's getting some nice size to her but she is grumpy. You got to learn from somebody with experience but the thing is there are many people out there that you do not want to learn from. You got to be very careful not to be in a hurry to die. What I mean by this is patience is probably one of the most important factors when working with these snakes. As you can see, I've been taking my time getting this little girl out of her enclosure. And yes, having a nice naturalistic enclosure does not make it easier for me to handle. And she just musked on me. That doesn't smell very nice. There's a difference between musk and must. Elephants go onto or into must and snakes musk on you. So just take your time. As a great, great mentor of mine says, Ono Nordia, don't be in a hurry to die because the fact is, if you're wanting to rush anything with these animals, it just makes it far more risky. I'm able to get this girl out if I just take it nice and slow. I don't move the hook too quickly. I just observe as well. And you can't get like aggravated. Oh, this is taking me so long. Oh, it's taking me half an hour to get the animal out. Nobody said this was going to be easy. And we try again. Patience, as I always say. Where are you going? And just like that. I say just like that, like it took no effort whatsoever, but it took a lot of patience. How she actually acts after we've cleaned her enclosure. Another thing is knowing your limits. You got to know your personal limits of what you can handle with. Like if you're feeling fluish, if you're feeling sick, don't work with these animals. It's literally that simple. Individual care of each animal is very different. Like look how she is reacting towards me. I am a big scary predator that's going over top of her now. Look how far her head is off the ground. Look how big I am. I am really threatening. They're afraid of you. You don't have to be afraid of them. Yes, you gotta be very careful. Like handling mumbers, for instance. It's actually not too difficult once you have the experience and the knowledge and the know-how on how to do it. It's just about taking your time working very slowly you can see i'm not jumping when she strikes at the hook stick over there she's tongue flicking now quite curious i can slowly pick her up there every movement i've got to make has to be nice calculated and slow complacency happens with experience in many cases guys that are very experienced take little risks They'll stick their hand in the water bowl or in the enclosure to take out the water bowl just because, you know, I've done it a thousand times, what's going to happen? You can see she's starting to get quite flighty right now and that's why you wear boots. Okay girl, okay, nice and slowly. Whoa! You see, and the faster I react when I'm trying to get her because I'm afraid of her getting under the enclosure there, the faster she starts to move. See, just like that, she starts to react very, very quickly because I was going very quickly after her because I didn't want her to get underneath there. And that's why she was reacting like that. Hey, on the hook, there we go. And you can see, just like that, she moves off like a lightning bolt. And lastly, not everything can be handled the same way. So you can see, I've got a nice wall here of different equipment I like to use. It's a good thing to have. Not everything will be able to be handled the same way because every individual acts differently. And on top of that, every single species acts differently. And you've got to know the species. Some of that does come with observation and experience. 
knowing, okay, I've never worked with this animal, but I've worked with similar species. This is how I'm going to react. You can't handle a viper the same way you handle an elapid like a cobra. How easy would it be for me right now, because there's a little puff adder in this corner of the enclosure, to just reach in and grab that poop over there? Super easy. Yeah, he probably won't do anything. 99% of the time you do it, nothing will probably happen. But it's that 1% that can result in a bite and end everything. So don't be stupid, just take your time and don't grab the snake behind the head. There is really no reason for you to ever do that. Medicating the animal actually doesn't need that either. Puff adders have long fangs. Snakes shed their fangs constantly. If I stick my hand in there, yes, I can grab the poop, but I can also be pricked by a fang. That's why you'll see maybe I handle the poop of your leopards with far more ease and kind of scoop it up with a bit of the substrate, but something like this over here, I can get pricked and then envenomated from a fang that has gone through the digestive system of something like a puff adder. Yes, it's not that likely, but it can still happen. The venom does seem to be denatured in some ways, but I've also heard stories of people being pricked by snake poop fangs and then having severe reactions towards that. I just need to spray where the poop was, where the defecation was, with a bit of disinfectant you see so that's a very key factor or key components that I should mention I was towering over the snake when I was cleaning the enclosure and now he's huffing and puffing all grumpy because he's afraid so I should have put the lid on Puff Adder's tail is sitting on my hand I am not grabbing it I'm not holding him he's just resting on top of me he knows okay Bryce is not grabbing his tail like a predator would. So in short, don't act like a predator, don't act like prey, and just observe. 